Hi, my name is Benedict. Uh, this is a uh, looking at a master of a track. I will be honest and say I don't actually know whose track it is. It came to me sideways. A friend of mine uh, apparently was talking to somebody in a reason group uh, who was asking, well, how do I how do I get my master right? I think he was focused on, on EQ, but he was trying to work out how to get his master right. And... Um, my friend was asking me how to do it, and, and I was like, well, it's it's virtually impossible to answer without actually having the thing in front of me, and the file was offered, so I've taken up the offer of playing with that, and we'll publish it for all to see. Uh, if you are the person who uh, whose song this actually is, love to hear from you, and thanks for presenting your file, allowing it to be used, because that's super important. It helps you to see what somebody else might do in your space. It's it's not as good as sitting right next to me, but nonetheless, it's it's a fair way there, and it helps others. So for those who go like, oh, but I can't show my file because somebody A might steal it, there's far too much of that. Not the idea of someone stealing it, not the actual stealing, it's very rare. Um, or I don't want people to see that I'm imperfect. Get over yourself because it's the sharing, it's the growing together that makes things work. So what have we got? This is just a section of it looped. And we're going to turn it into something more like this. No mastering process. Mastering process. Be very fair. This is the level at which it came to me. The file itself is looks like it's possibly Reason 5 or something like that. Either way, it's pre-SSL. It's very old version of Reason is what I assume it's come out of because there's no usage of the SSL and just the, um, the old 16 input mixer. Actually, sorry, 14 input mixer. Was odd. I guess that's what fit on the screen. Uh, it's an unusual sort of a way of putting things together, but there's a logic to it. I'm not going to get into the mix. We're going to assume that this mix is good. So if you're thinking of saying, oh, but you'll never get a good master because the mix sucks, that's not the point here. Uh, we're not doing a mix walkthrough, we're doing a master walkthrough. Uh, and so therefore, we'll mostly assume that the mix is what this person wanted. And we'll see what we can do on top. The first thing was that I had to raise the levels. So to get it into the SSL thing and make it a little bit more consistent and easier to manage, then I've just popped the whole thing into one SSL mixer channel and that's it. So everything that he's got is just going through here. I've used a gain plugin uh, to add 12 dB. So that gets us up into the right sort of arena. So if we look at our numbers here, we're, we're pretty low. Pull this up. Now we're, we're hovering around what our numbers should be for the master. So if you're wondering why that's added, that's the only thing that that is doing there. Quick looking at the file. Apparently there was some focus on the drum, the kick. Which appears to be this. I guess we can solo it here. I haven't fully worked out how he mixes anything here. And it's going through this amount of processing, which I will say seems like a lot, but again, I'm not going to be particularly judgy because it, each part of what he's done here does change the sound. I do just wonder though at some things like a compressor to reshape the sound and then using a clipper to hack the top off. Maybe there's another way of doing it, but he's got the sound that he wants. The only thing that I would say from a mix point of view is that it looks like he's using compressors and maximizers to change his mix levels, uh, which, yes, it works, it gets you there, but it's kind of inelegant. But at the same time, if he's using reason two, three, four, five, there weren't a lot of other choices. If it were me, I probably would have just pulled out one of these devices, let's say the compressor, with no compression action at all, and that way I've got basically plus minus 12 and then another plus minus 12 to use as a 24 dB plus minus kind of a thing. But it, it's a tricky one. If you don't have rack extensions, it's a tricky one. Uh, but there's a fair amount of 
pretty heavy handed EQing in here, which is fine because it's getting him the sound that he feels like he wants. Down the track, we might look at as to whether that might be causing us some issues. That's as far as I'm gonna go on the mix. So now we start to look at this master. I'm gonna turn all these devices off and then walk through explaining why they're there, what they're doing. We'll leave the maximizer on because it's not adding any gain and that way anything we do can't blow up the world. So no noticeable difference now. Remember, first thing I did was brought the level up. The reason that I've done this outside is so that I can AB this without a dramatic level gain because if every time I AB'd, here's my whole master and it moved to 12 dB, <laughs> there's no win in that. So, let's get our level back up. I've picked a section of the track that gives us drum and bass in, bass on its own, some cool little extra sounds. Uh, I think everything was coming from subtractors. It sounds like a subtractor has this really lovely um, uh, virtual analog sort of sound and feel, uh, especially seeing he's just used the devices which were available at the time, which were very much of their time. So there's some cool little, little bits in here. So we've got some variety as we walk across our master. The first thing I tend to do is actually compress. Now, this compression, is not designed to do level work. And this is one that people really seem to struggle with. They think the compressor is about leveling. No, the compressor at this point is about groove. So the way that I set this up, hopefully you can hear with an AB, off, on, off, Hopefully you hear when it's in, but we get a little bit more groove. It's kind of straight. Wait for his drum bits. And hopefully you hear when it comes in that it gets more of a, oh, it gets its funky on. Now the way that I set this up, is that I'll see, leave my input gains the way they are. If I need to gain somewhere to push to get decent levels to start with, I'll either have a gain in front of this completely. Um, you can do it from here. I just don't love to do it that way. So I'll take my threshold, pull it right down to nowhere. I'll push my ratio pretty darn high. This fella starts looking like this and I'll leave my output gain alone as well. This is gonna brutalize the sound. I'm not looking for sound here at all. If you're sitting here thinking, oh, but the sound quality is awful, you're killing it. Yes, that's the idea. What I'm looking for is groove. I'll pull my release down pretty fast. And I'm just listening to attack. It's, there's no sort of funky in this at all. But as we raise this, we start to get a bit of... And somewhere around there... I can't remember what my number is. It will feel different in headphones than it did in speakers. But somewhere around there, we start to get this hitch. Uh, if you've got someone sitting next to you in the studio, as long as they're not one of those people who constantly has to do this all the time, then you will probably find that they start to at that point. They can't help it because you've got the groove. Then set your release. Now we're looking to make this groovy. Not to sound good, just to sound groovy. If it's too long, it won't work. If it's too short, it'll just sort of sound choppy. Wait for that kick to come back in.
So somewhere around there. Again, it's different in headphones. I'll take this threshold, pull it right back up. Till I've got you know, just a few dB. I never like to see it go below or above 4 dB of gain reduction and pull this back. See, so here, not much is happening. So we can either go with a higher ratio or a lower threshold. All depends on what you want. Kind of flat. We've got that little bit of groovy coming in. That's all we're looking to do. We don't care at all about transients and peak levels or any of that. Just find the groove. Once you've got that, this next decision is a little bit of an unusual one, but I have tried as much as is possible to do a good job with just reason tools. Uh, and this, this is a little bit of a trick, but it works nicely. Um, I hope that you have updated to something past reason 405 or whatever version this was, uh, in which case you can't do this, but it's probably worth it if you're doing the music thing. We'll look at adding a tape thing. Not to be cool and tapey, but because we want some movement. The mix itself is is fine. I have no no particular beef with the mix, but it's a little it's a little flat. Uh, he's relied on stereo separation and not really thought about front back. So there's no, as far as I can notice, there's no sort of echoes. I don't even know whether there's a master reverb. Uh, there's not much to to do this, so we really could benefit from creating a feeling of depth and some movement. So, a couple of stages in here. I take this delay, turn off sync, I always turn off sync, set it to as low as possible, make sure there's no sort of creepy offset kind of thing. Feedback, I actually allow a bit of feedback, because tape, we don't want that. Tape actually has a habit of sort of getting some of its own signal caught back up in itself. It softens transients, so a little bit of feedback's okay. I will turn on the color. Use whichever amuses you the most, but overdrive I actually like in here. Overdrive in Scream tends to suck the bottom end out, which is great for guitars, uh, but here it doesn't seem to do that. Uh, so it, it gives you, you can push actually pretty hard, but I'm not looking to push hard. I'm not looking to do my drive or saturation at this point, other than to sort of say, yeah, let it just catch a little on the way through. I make sure that my wet dry is 100% wet. As you hear, this is not good. It needs to be 100% wet. If you say, oh, but, but, but you've got some delay, who cares, it's the master. If anybody's listening to this going, oh man, you've got like one and a half milliseconds delay, Tell them, thank you very much. Go have a nice life in somebody else's, not mine. Raise your wobble a bit. Now, don't raise it too high, please. Unless you're hell-bent on sounding like a drunken lo-fi hipster, keep, keep your levels relatively low. What were they at? They were at 16. Good enough. That now adds a little bit of movement. So if we pull this out, actually, we'll pull that out just to one change. we should have a feeling of just this sort of loosens up a little bit, becomes a little less flat and papery. We don't want to be hearing it consciously. So if you can't really hear it, don't feel too bad. You will need good speakers, be sitting in a reasonable listening position. Um, failing that, I guess, cursed headphones, but they're not a good plan. The other thing that I've done is I've taken the LFO, I've pushed its rate pretty high and added another little bit of this. A negative of the echo in my mind is that it locks the LFO to stereo, but we can abuse that here. We can take advantage of it. And that means having a very tiny amount, one or 2% of this, 
means that we're actually got a tiny, tiny bit of movement here, but there's no mix, so we're not phasing, flanging, what have you. You don't notice it, but that little bit of movement not only adds a nice little sense of stereoness, not that there's a problem with stereo in this mix at all as such, uh, but nice little bit of movement uh, that's outside of the groove of the track. Therefore, it's like, ooh, that's, that's different. We notice it. And that little bit of feedback, we're messing with our transients, a little bit of wobble just to, so the things are never quite where our brain expects them to be, which makes them interesting, exciting. Nature never draws straight lines, so we should not draw straight lines. So this is changing the straight line of the groove to make it funkified. This is changing the straight lines of time and a little bit of pitch. Cool. So tape layer two now is to add in the scream tape algorithm. Some people say it does bad things. Don't care. Tape does nothing but bad things. Tempting to push, that does not sound good. Keep it low. I tend to keep it at about 16. It's, you can push harder, but it all depends on how burry you want to get. I generally don't want to get burry. Initially, I will have tape speed, which is just a low pass filter at fully open and the compression fully down. I don't understand what the compression here does, but I feel like it kind of makes things a little bit muted overall. I'm not saying it's bad or wrong, but I've already got my compression. I don't want to mess with that. But I am going to roll off because I feel like these highs are a little too brittle. Um, they're a little too papery, a little too reason sound. So I'm going to roll that back just a little bit. Now, it's entirely probable I won't actually have done this at this stage. I'll probably have left it open until I get to the point of doing EQ, and then I'll decide whether I'm doing it at the EQ or here, or a bit of here and a bit at the EQ, because a small move here and a small move there will compound far more nicely and far, more, far less of a perfect straight line. Remember, we want to avoid straight lines. Where we have got straight lines, we want to do something to make them move, to wander, to be surprising. So that's just using the tape, just the saturation in here, just to add a nice little sparkle. So our sound now feels just that little bit more together. If we do an overall bypass, It's actually brighter. Despite the fact that I've rolled some stuff off, it actually feels brighter overall. We're sort of pulling everything into the middle a little bit. EQ apparently was his big question. I'm going to attack EQ twice just to show you different devices. Now, yes, technically we could use the M-Class EQ. I would rather chew my own toenails off. It's not because it's a bad device. It's just not my idea of fun or particularly easy to use. So again, if you are stuck in reason four or five or whatever, uh, then you're going to have to make do, uh, but otherwise move forward, get something that's better suited to this task. I will initially show you with Q range. Yes, it's a VST. Uh, I like Q range. It's um, I think probably my second favorite EQ device and is totally free. It's not as pretty as some, but it sounds good and it's very, very functional. So we'll turn off our points. I'm gonna have to try and remember what they are when I get there. First thing I'll do is I'll get rid of what doesn't serve and that is this low end. So I'm gonna high pass filter. Whilst I'm doing this, it's a nice way to check to see if I've got anything really problematic in my mix. So if my mix is going to work passably here, phone speaker sound. If I want to get a little bit more sort of that tells me that my mix basically works. Cool. 
I don't really do that, but at the same time, if I'm at all concerned, it is a thing to be done. But I will go 30, 35. We can comfortably go up to sort of 60 or so before you're going to start to really feel like the, the bottom end's been pulled out. What about 35? Get rid of it. It just isn't achieving anything useful. I'm then going to say, where do I want to clarify? There are a couple of approaches to this. The most common one is to do this, scan through and go. Now, whatever you do here is going to sound awful. So you must not fall for the trick of going, oh, that sounds awful. I better chop it out. Doing it again. I better chop that out. Better... And you end up with a comb filter. If your EQ looks like a comb filter, you have got it wrong. That goes for um, mix, tracking, or mastering, all the same. What we're looking for is a particular kind of sound or feel in the sound that we don't want to hear. Of course, if we do that, everything is something we don't want to hear. It's not about getting rid of resonances. There's been this massive fashion to suddenly say, oh, I need to de-resonate my sounds. It's like, sound is resonance. It's an oscillator, dude. And if we're using an acoustical instrument, if it's got a cardboard box on it, that's a resonator. So if you're de-resonating, then you're taking your guitar, you are, um, well, assuming you're allowing the strings to actually vibrate and make noise, you're actually taking the box off. If you are an electric guitarist, you might go, who cares, the box is annoying, uh, in which case you can't use a cabinet, fella. No guitar cabinet, no speaker in a box, because guess what? That resonates like a, well, something that resonates a lot. So we're not looking for resonances. We're merely looking for a character of sound. The other approach that people will take is the negative, because they go, oh, this doesn't sound bad. And that's okay. What you're looking for is an absence of what it is you didn't want to hear. Either way will get you there so long as you know why you're doing this. I'm not a big, massive fan of the pan and scan thing, but it makes a certain amount of sense. Over time, ideally, you would go, yeah, I can, I can hear something that's in, the, let's say, 350. That's going to be about there. Test it and go, is that better or not better? Well, I haven't proved anything because I don't hear a significant difference, in which case it wasn't 350. I know there's something down here, and there is a kick. It, it's sort of thick and cardboard boxy. It's it, I, I pick that sound up much better in speakers than in headphones. Headphones are just a nightmare for this. But I'm looking and I'm finding, yeah, there's this sort of thick, boxy, um, kind of like chocolate syrup made of mud uh, that's in there. And I, I don't want that because it muddies up the mix. It makes the mix less clear. So I'm going to find that and then pull it out a little bit. If you're doing this, wrong. At a mastering point, 2 dB is pretty extreme. Now, rather than going, I'm only listening to that sound, you have to school yourself to go, okay, how does the mix sound without that sound? Because the change should not be so much to that sound, that little, you know, chocolate sauce made of mud. Uh, it should be, how does the rest of the mix feel now? If the rest of the mix feels like it's clearer, uh, we hope to, in this case, because of what we're doing here, we hope to have the kick feel clearer overall, and we hope to have the rest of the mix feel clearer overall. That's why we're doing this. We're not doing it to flatter or to get rid of those frequencies. We're doing it to make the rest of the mix open up. And I feel like we've got a clearer punch 
on our drum and the rest of the mix feels just that little bit more open. Good. Now, I will move to some of the mids. What have I got? I've done something here. There is a, a kind of a thing there. While attempting to do this, it's going to sound okay now, but when you come back a little bit later, you're going to go, why does my mix feel like it's never really there? It's like it's missing. Yeah, no, not, not a good plan. Uh, so pick your point. And then move it. I've moved a dB here uh, with a reasonably broad curve just to sort of even things out. Again, we're looking to the rest of the mix and looking to clarify it. Now, those hi-hats I've been finding annoyingly bright the whole way through. Brittle, thin, papery, scratchy. That's going to be some personal choice, but I do want to soften them up. Uh, and one way is to merely roll off the tops. But then we end up with a a dull mix. So I'm leaving it just to roll off the very, very highest bits here. And then I'm actually adding here. I've gone through and I've picked, well, where do that while tempting to go, oh yeah, no. But where can I pull in a lot of body on those sounds, meaning we don't have to rely on the the overtones, they become more implied. And that's about here. And three is generally a clarity, so you're often pushing that forward, especially with, with vocalists. Um, it's just low air. And then I've done a little bit here, just to, and we've still got that, just rolling off some of the, the real papery stuff. Is that only in, exists in digital? There's only one thing that I feel like, because of our moves here, we've lost a little bit of welly, a little bit of beef in the low end. Because as you can see, this is rolling off some of it, and this is rolling off some of it. So I'm just gonna find and focus very carefully. use a very tiny cut boost. And again, I would not want to do this in, in headphones, but you're just looking for that point. And what this does is it pulls together. It has a gluing effect because it glues your bass and drum together a little bit more saying, here, we've got this in common for you. So it's the pull tech, push, pull there. It's not that I deliberately do it that way, but that is the visual readout of the pull tech push pull approach. So, pretty small difference. But we've got more clarity. If you sit and listen, you'll hear that they're like those really cool little kind of um, subtractor sounds are coming forward really nicely. The hi hats, which are obviously part of this. rather than trying to get their power up outside the frame and now pushing here. Overall, the low end is punchier and because we've given it a groove, it's working nicer. So if we bypass, That's kind of forward, that's like the frequency is leaning at me like this. Turn it off. The whole sound gets deeper. Yes, that's forward, but this is encouraging you to, to fall into it whilst actually having more clarity. And note that I haven't done some kind of creepy smiley face curve. All the moves in here really, really small. And that's one way of attacking it. 
going to show you another way, which is just that the, the, the more powerful your tools, the more you can clarify. Because one thing that um, QRange doesn't do is it doesn't allow me to solo a band. This is a great way of going through and going, well, what bothers me? Yeah, I don't, I don't dig that. Again, if we're gonna we'll deal with the bass whilst we're here. I'm choosing different points, so it's proof that there's no right or wrong here. In solo, it's not the most charming, but that I don't love. So let's try actually changing that to a shelfy wealthy. And I'm gonna put a pass on here as well. So we've warmed that up. Again, I'm doing this in headphones, which I wouldn't ever encourage anyone to do. I've ended up roughly where I was before. It's giving a lot of detail in particular the the little um, cool subtractor bubbles. It's a very similar sort of result. The main thing I wanted you to see was just that if you can solo a band, it might help you to hear what you're looking for. Obviously in this we can get into all kinds of things like um, like dynamics as well. Um, so when we go above our threshold. And that's a way of stopping our lines from being always the same. There's no right or wrong there. I shall pull that fella out and just go back to this one. So better clarity, better snap, uh, better sizzle. There's less up here, which is really hard to focus on. Um, and we've pulled our range into the listenable range a little bit better. I'll try and pop up a graphic of, you know, you mix here, you do not mix out here. I've then got to do the limiting. I do very little limiting uh, and rely a little bit more on soft clipping. I see some huge amounts of gain reductions on limiters. Um, your call, to be honest, my last record, uh, 
um, Eternal Eternity of Mechanism. It's quite the title. Uh, I did push harder into my limiters for that, that sound. Uh, but for the moment, I'm going to say go easy. You'll see I've got my look ahead off. We could run without the limiter altogether. And we're just pushing into the clipper. But I'll go with a slower. The reason I will still have some limiting is because if you if you stay up in clip too long, it's possible for it to start to sound distorted. Rather than the cool things about clipping, you get the bad things about clipping. And at this point, we don't want it to sound like we've just put this through a guitar uh, pedal. And I push my levels from where they were until I feel like I'm getting the right amount of... I think I was sitting at five. While attempting to do this, you've got a smashed mess. It's loud, but it lacks all dynamic. Your job is to find that point between losing a little bit of dynamic, but adding a lot of what feels like dynamic, welly, uh, without going into actually limiting your dynamics, because the less dynamic you've got, the louder the piece seems in the first few seconds, but after a few seconds, 30 seconds tops, minute, uh, definitely, it starts to become incredibly wearing on the listener. Fair enough if the listener is, is only listening on buds or um, a little Bluetooth tub, which has no dynamic range whatsoever. They may think that uh, that a 2 dB, 2 dB dynamic range is just brilliant. Um, but the problem is for people who really want to listen and enjoy and feel like they fall into and become emotionally engaged with this music, which is vital, especially when you're indie, then keep dynamic. Good way to check that is always to be watching this. Good old fashioned crest factor. Now we've got a lot less crest factor here than I would normally use. You see how this is always just sitting there, it's not moving. I think it's because of mixed decisions because you see quite a lot of instruments have been hit with the maximizer. So they have been soft clipped already, meaning that their transients are gone. Yes, it makes the sound in solo sound good, but it also reduces our transients. But nonetheless, I'm keeping my VU at zero or minus 12 dB. And the fact that there's a little less, well, whatever. I'm happy with that. A little bit of flicker here. Soft clip soaking up a certain amount, which adds some more sparkle and movement, especially as the soft clip comes in. So as you go a little bit louder, it feels like it embiggens itself. That's always a good thing, less straight line. Because the problem with limiters is that they just push down and they bloop your, uh, your your dynamic and they bloop your uh, your treble and presence. I then, because this doesn't have an output post clipper, it's got an output pre clipper, not that it's a real problem, but just to make sure I trim some off. Normally I do 0.3 of a dB, apparently YouTube insists on minus one dB. Um, I don't think their converter is that bad, um, but anywhere from sort of 0.3 to a full dB off. I mean, this is running pretty darn quiet, so I might say, let's give it 0.3. No one really fully notices a difference, but goody -o. Just because there really doesn't seem to be a lot of transient transient. And I'm Pretty good to call that. I will not call that and send that out straight away. I'll come back and listen to that some hours later. So from here to here. I feel like we've got a nice movement of that bass when it's controlled. We've, we've de-muddied a little bit of it. Personally, I would have preferred to do that on the kick itself. Um, or maybe on the kick bass combo because the two aren't made to move together. I would have been putting my kick and my bass into a bus, which might have to be done manually here with a little mixer, and then compressing the pair of them. So when they work together, they become more as one. They groove a little bit better. Uh, yes, there are some decisions here.
notice how the piece still works. So you don't have to have your kick drum as loud as you think. It doesn't have to be as aggressive as you think. If you wanted to feel aggressive, by all means. I was listening to an EBM track yesterday where the voice was like this big against this enormous kick drum. But it was because his voice was really tiny. Yes, the kick drum was, was over mixed, but it was EBM. Um, but it didn't feel unbalanced in context. <laughs> Let's see if we can focus more on a quick drum bit. But I would probably pull that out. And if that were the case, then you could possibly look at putting in our sort of 130, 170 or whatever it was dip just in here. So if I were doing it, let's just introduce a, a new one of these. Um, I'm, 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 uh, M class EQ, actually we'll turn his, turn his thing on. I would probably have looked at, I'm gonna need one of these actually, finding my point, let's say about 130. Hear how that kick drum now actually kicks nicer in the first place? So you try to solve your problems here. That's experience. Um, and maybe if we got rid of... That I think gets in the way of the what's going on up top. It's not the kick drum show. It's not Metallica, it's not Lars. It's, sorry, being mean. Um, it's not the kick drum show. The kick drum needs to speak down below, but I think because you were feeling like it wasn't speaking properly, then you tried to make it speak up really high. <laughs> I don't mind that, but if it were me and if there were a knob on here to control the overall gaininess of this, I would pull it back and we'd probably find that we ended up with a better result. But I'll pull that out because that's not my, that's not my position to be making mixed decisions. I just wanted to show that because I think you could have gotten a clearer result that way in the first place. <laughs> I think I'm happy enough. For something that's been done in headphones, it's quite, it's essentially the same as what I've done on speakers. We now have something that I would say, yep, let's run that off, put that out there. I generally wouldn't put it out as a release release today. I would be listening to it in my studio. I'd be listening to it in the lounge room with a sub after just watching some television, so my palate's a little bit cleansed. Uh, and also at night in bed, reading a book um, on the big wharfies. Uh, just to hear, does this, does this feel like it's telling the story that I want it to? I think, though, that we would be winning. This is 45 minutes, so probably 45 minutes more than you wanted to spend. But hopefully it helps you to understand a little bit about what is done, but more importantly, why it's done, so that you can look into it. If you haven't upgraded to a newer version of Reason, it might be worth considering. Uh, if you have, then look at opening up your options. It is actually really rather hard to EQ with the M-Class EQ. There's nothing wrong with it. It just isn't much fun to use. It's, it's, it, it's a tricky one. It can take a bit to find the EQ that you're going to want to live with. I love the, uh, the, the F2 in here, but I keep my F2 mixing window. Let's just... Try to focus on that kick. See you later. I try to keep this for. Um, this, oh, I've, got to, I've got to focus this on. <laughs> this is kind of weird. Okay. I would focus this, and I could still do the same trick of going. Well, okay, where's that? Where's that kind of cardboardy? 
somewhere around there. Everything sounds like cardboard in headphones. Or I could do the that little push there and then pull here. I have to move into this mode. Oh, except it doesn't go low enough. But I will make mixed moves with this. This is a joy to use. So even if you only upgrade to get this, it's a, it's a vast improvement. We'll turn that off because we don't want that. Otherwise, get to the point where you can bring in some kind of EQ that you really get to know and, and trust. The Q range, while a little odd, I do trust. Uh, and I just did a review for, it's not here anymore, the, um, the Kirchhoff, Three-Body Tech Kirchhoff, and I think that it's a really wonderful piece of work. It, um, it's highly technical, but only when you want it to be. Uh, you can do an awful lot with it, but you have to understand how to make the most of those kinds of EQs before you go investing in them. And no way would I say to you just go out and spend $150 on an EQ that you don't really understand how to make it work. So Q range is great. I like that a lot. Um, second would be Nova. Nova is a really good EQ. I just don't, for some reason, I don't love it. I see certain devices as being, well, most of my devices, but certain devices like delays and EQs as being things you should want to marry. You know, you go out and you meet lots of women and some of them, there's something you really, really like about them, but you can't live with them. Uh, doesn't make them wrong. Doesn't make them bad. Um, they might even be prettier, but you find the one you can live with and then you spend your life living with them and hopefully making a better life as a result. So my delays and my EQs are very much like that. I try to make it that way with every device I use regularly, but these ones I try to be kind of like, yep, yeah, I, I can marry that one and live with it for the rest of my life. And that way you spend more and more time in it rather than dotting around here, there and everywhere. But you can still technically achieve the same things in here, but I would say you probably want to learn to be a lot, lot less aggressive on these gains look at what you can achieve with 2db not because there's anything wrong with using huge gains uh, there are some times where it really is the right way to go but try to learn how to achieve the results you want with small gains so then when you use big gains you're like really gaining from it rather than just sort of overdoing it or creating an issue for yourself if there are any questions pop them on down below or oh, I better put that back in again um, if you are interested in getting work like this done for yourself understand that um, this is what I do for a living but reach on out you can either reach out through here um, my site there's a wonderful form to fill in I know you don't want to fill in the form but that gives me what I need to know about you and your project uh, and your budget um, and Happy to have a chat. I will always be honest. And that is if I don't see myself in a project or don't think it's the wisest way to do something, I will be honest with you. And that's a little bit of a short commodity these days. It's not about being negative. It's just about trying to help you get a useful result. There's no point me taking your money and giving you a bad result because, well, that's, that's poor professionalism. So bottom line, we started with this brought our level up and through the magic of mastering I have a track that I think delivers what it was really trying to do so you have a great day